Well, folks, we thought we were done with the mission, but there's more. Yes, that is correct, 44. They use the same battery. So we're back at it again, continuing one of the longest missions, it seems like. we should. I wish I could have known it was this long. We would have done the other logging mission first and got all the logging in one mission and all this in the other or in one video and then all this in the other video. But no, that's not how it turned down, so... Oh, okay, cool. You still want me to send you a battery, though, right? I can send you a battery. And do you need the charger? I can... Ah, I'll just send you the charger. It's part of the deal. If you don't want the charger, I will use it. But if you do, I'll send it. Either way. Okay, cool. They're used, though, so just know it's not... They work fine, but it's not going to be, like, as long as the new ones, for sure. Oh, come on, baby. All right. I will get two cargo containers, I think. Those are half... Those are two slotters, right? Right. I can take the twin steer and get those. Okay, there you go. And they're on, they're in Northport. Okay. Of course, I have the three slot twin steer. Oh no, don't go this way. Go the other way. Here. That's the the other one. The, the pay star. The pay star, yeah. Did you start recording or? We are recording, are yes. Okay. Nope. Here. We're on the move. Wow. Fishtail on the trailer on the ice. So this truck's done a pretty good job. Oh. This spot, though. Not too bad. It's not too bad. And it's not very sad. I think we'll have this thing whipped out. And then we'll finish it with the excellent logging mission. And we'll be done. This will be the last episode of Alaska forever. Actually, it won't be because I have to, we have to get done around 1030. So we'll finish this mission and then I got to go. So we'll do that very last one. It's the very last thing we do. Tomorrow. I remember the, seeing through the bottom of the map, yeah. I never actually had a truck fall through the map, but I do remember early days when you could actually dig holes so deep that they would actually fall through the bottom of the map. You'd see the hole. In this game? Yep. They fixed that, like, first or second patch. <laughs> it was a pretty quick fix, but... Yeah, there was that place over by Michigan, like when you first come out of the garage, there's that big mud pit on the first map. And it would just go deeper and deeper and deeper, and then all of a sudden you could see through the ground. And then I guess people would actually fall through it. There was also, in multiplayer, all kinds of glitches where the cargo would desync, and so it would just go shooting up into the air. Trucks would go shooting up into the air. It was There was a lot of problems. But they fixed it all. It just took them some time. Jeepers criminy. Left to the tunnel.
That's a, f- a funny memory, though, uh, Red Alpha. Thank you for bringing that up because that reminds me. Oh, wow. Spin Tires was the game that made you get your first controller. Interesting. The only thing that made me mad about this game, really, and I know there's other bugs that other people hate, but I hate the fact that you can't use a regular steering wheel and transmission, like with a clutch. Um, both Snow Runner and Mud Runner, I mean, Spin Tires and Mud Runner, had full support for uh, for manual transmission uh, gameplay. So you, instead of using the low, high, low, plus, and all that stuff, you could just shift one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, depending on the truck, some trucks had more gears than that. But um, yeah, it was really it's really frustrating that they got rid of that whole system because it was really fun to be able to drive with the stick shift, and it made it a real challenge. Though in real life, I probably would have burnt my clutch out. But oh, Jane's USAF, yeah, that, I remember those days. I hearken back. Oh man. One of my all-time old favorite old games, like was it Jane's World War II Fighters? Oh, that was such a great game. You could actually shoot parts of the airplane off. Back then, that was a big deal, you know. You get shot up, and then be holes in your wings and stuff. You have to dive bomb tanks. That was a great game. I remember F-15 Strike Eagle Two. Strike Eagle Two. Yep. 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 Great stuff. I got my Commodore sixty four. <laughs> Oh, what? It got it got a suspension ding on each side. That was ridiculous. One on each side. Thanks. And my other favorite one, of course, was the was Chris Roberts uh Strike Eagle. <laughs> what a great game. Strike Commander, that's what it was called. It was an F16. You'd play it as a mercenary flying an F16. That was a fun game. Jane's World War II. Okay. So I'm picking up... Let me look again. Just two concrete slabs, right? Correct. And those are to my left. I think it's this one, right? The first yep. warehouse? Yep. Correct. Same place you picked up. You'll need an Elgato is what you'll need to stream. They're about 200 bucks. You'll probably need a microphone too. Um, But yeah, or a headset that has a microphone. That's probably the best way to go with that. Uh, Elgato. E-L-G-A-T-O. And they have several different models. Uh, I think they just came out with one that does 4K. Uh, But it goes, you plug the Xbox into the Elgato. And then uh, one port, it goes on to your television. And then the other one goes to your laptop or PC, the streaming device. And it captures it and puts it on the PC. You can use the Elgato software or you can use OBS. Um... No, the stream deck's for playing games, but you can't... I don't know if it can stream or not. Oh, the stream deck. The stream deck is... I have that. It's actually... It's it's how you start and stop recordings. I have a bunch of buttons on it. I can slow chat down just like that or speed it back up again. I can also fix my track R. I can fire an ad, which I won't do. I have, Mine's real basic. I don't have a lot of stuff on it. I basically have pause in, in the video recording start and stop the video recording. I have a button to open OBS and a button to open Twitch and then streaming. And that's those are the buttons that I have. You can put other stuff on there and I probably should. Eventually I will. I used to have it all set up and then my computer had to get um, or the software got reset somehow and it lost all my settings. So like, okay. And I just, I did a base program with the things that I needed and left it at that. Um, I'm probably going to steal my wife's because she never uses it. She's got the newer one, the newer Steam Deck, and the nice thing about it is, or Stream Deck, uh, and it, the nice thing about it is that it has the ability to sit more upright, because mine is real flat, so if I'm using my steering wheel, wheel or whatever, I can't necessarily see the buttons, because it's too flat on the desk. I don't know why they did that, but the newer one has a, uh, 
a base that had that extends so that you can actually sit it upright. So, yeah, I mean, that's we're going to be taking a break from just so you guys know. As soon as I'm ready to move, like once we found a place and ready to move, like during that week or two, I probably will not be streaming. I'm going to have to move down. We're going to have to get wherever we're going to live set up, cleaned and, and ready to move in. And then we're going to have to move all the stuff down and set it all back up. I don't know if I'll have internet yet or not. So we may be down for a week. We might be down for two or three weeks. I hope it won't be anything longer than that, but... We are going to be down for a little while because we're going to have to set everything back up again and get internet installed and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be fiber, to be honest with you, but it might be. You never know. We'll just <sighs> hopefully it all works out. That's I can, that's all I can do is hope because I don't know where we're going to be or. Yeah, like I'm not even going to move my computer down at first. So I'm going to get all our furniture down there and get all that set up. And like any of my guitars, amps, all that stuff is going to stay up here at Mark's house in Cleveland while I get the house set up and the furniture in place. And then once we have that, then I'll come back up and get my stuff. But I don't want things breaking. So I'll dry, I'll go up, I'll, you know, I'll get Moni settled and I'll drive up and get my expensive stuff and bring it down in one trip, hopefully. Yeah, I'm hoping if we, uh, you know, best case scenario, we have cable or or fiber still uh, available uh, and we'll get onto that. Uh, worst case scenario, it's going to be Starlink, you know, it's, <laughs> and I probably still can stream as long as we have a good, good signal. So, um, but if it, you know, I, I, once again, I'm hoping for a place that's already somewhat established. But like I said, if we're going to live out of a trailer, I don't know then I'm, it's. All bets are off, and we're going to have to figure out something, so. Yep, I probably will just come down and get it, to be honest with you, 44, because, I don't know, we'll see, but, but, um, or maybe we can, we can road trip buddy together, I'll, I'll be the road trip buddy, <laughs> I'll come down and you can help me drive it up. <laughs> Oh, but I see. That way you can get back down without flying. I, that makes sense. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's the whole point, right? <laughs> I'm just going to take my time. I'll probably stop overnight somewhere on the way back. and, and yeah, But I probably would just fly down and then drive back. It's Flights to Louisiana are not, like, crazy expensive. So, But hopefully that will happen. I'm, that's, like I said, two or three weeks, and that's definitely on the books. In fact... <laughs> Here's the dumb thing. If we don't get a lot of money from our equity and I'm, you know, we're going to, it's going to be a struggle. It's much more likely that I will be, I, I mean, either way it's likely, but, um, it's more likely that I will get it. Cause we're going to need something to tow a tra Uh, we're gonna have to get a, a trailer home. So it's more likely that I'm going to do that anyway, but hopefully we don't have to live like that. But so now I go to white Valley, right? Okay. Yep. So I'm just going to cut across here. White Valley. So I'll, I'll fly, fly down to you. And I'll look around Louisiana for a good trailer home that's available. <laughs> Pick one up on the way back. This is what we're going to live in. <laughs> uh, I suppose you could have cable in one other. Actually, our friends do. That. My wife's friends that have a trailer, they live out of a trailer. They have, they have cable internet because they they're, they have it permanently parked. And so it's like they just, they have internets. The decking. Oh, no, when I say trailer, I mean a home. <laughs> a trailer home. <laughs> I don't want to live on an open top trailer. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that would be cold. Even if even if it's a little warmer in Kentucky than it is in Ohio, it still would be a pretty cold winter finish off. <laughs> Spring. Not a great place to live. <laughs> we'll manage somehow. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Red Elf. <laughs> FEMA trailers. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, Jay. Uh, but a tow behind. I don't. I don't want like a self-propelled. Because that with a if you have, here's the thing. If you buy one of those mobile homes that have the engine in it, then um, your issue is going to be that if something goes wrong with the the motor or the home, either either half of it then you're stuck because you don't you but if the pickup truck goes bad well you can get a new pickup if the if the the home portion goes bad well you just set that one aside get take your pickup and get a new home <laughs> oh god or puts yeah that's well eventually i mean that's what we're, hopefully we'd be you know, I'm trying to get out of the situation without owing people money. So at least this way, I'm not going to have payments going out all the time aside from bills and not like house bills and not car bills and stuff like that. We'll have that all paid off. And, and the idea is then we can start saving money. And if we you know, have to start small and then move to a double wide or some stupid thing like that, well, then so be it. But you start off small. Double wides are sixty thousand bucks. So if we can get a piece of land and a trailer, and live out of that trailer for you know a year while I try to earn income and save up for that, um, and Moni's working on her horse thing and we're trying to bring stuff in, and then after a, a horrible year of living in a trailer and almost killing each other, we might survive and make it to the double wide, the upgrade. Dude, they got four bedroom, two bathroom double wides. They're really nice. Like we've been looking at some of the. the the ones online, they run about seventy, eighty thousand bucks, but they're really, really nice. Like they're, it's like a house. So, li like I should say, like a house. They don't last as long, but I think you get probably realistically fifteen good years out of them. You know, before they start to really kind of fall apart, but. <laughs> it's going to be way before then, dude. <laughs> but yeah, it, you'll, you're welcome to, to come up anyway and hang out. So we'll have land and hopefully we'll have a, a camper. And here's the other thing, too. This is my other plan. OK, so if things are, are bad at first, then we have to do that. Once we move into the double wide, I will keep the camper and that'll become my office. So I'll have my own little spot to just hide away keep my gear away from the children and the dogs and the dirt and the mud and everything and be ready to run to the hills maybe that's wishful thinking but that's where I'm at that's all I got right now <laughs> oh god I just looked down and saw that about to happen oh dang it oh Oh, shoot. Ouch. Tell me you didn't see that, Javius. <laughs> oh, it's all fixed. What? See what? Javius, are you still alive? Of course I'm alive. I'm working. <laughs> it's busy. I'm busy here. Of course I saw that. <laughs> it's, I had a little bit of an accident. The good news is there's a trailer store, so we can get... Actually, you know what? Just for... Oh, 31000 bucks. That was a good-paying job. Jeez. Um, we might as well do the last mission, right? Or do you have time, Javius? Is it too late? No, I think... Uh, time. Let's do one more. Detached trailer. No. So, wait, wait. Did that, was that mission all done? Finally. Yes. We got thirty-one thousand dollars. It was definitely well worked Done. for. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh. I got the medium log thing. Okay. Am I gonna do long logs again? Sure. So I'm gonna do. We're gonna do. Let's see. You're at the. Oh, we can go to this garage. That's right. Okay. Let me let me join you. Hold on. Uh, recover. Okay. I'm gonna. We're gonna change trucks here. I know, I saw, I've been watching, you. I've seen, I'm not watching you, but I've seen you being, oh my God. I've seen you playing it, Jay Wah. That's funny. That new uh, map, the, 
New Zealand map is freaking amazing. A lot of cool animals on there too. Like just easy to. Hunt. Uh, yes. Sorry, you need to set the mission. I just did. Did it show up for you? Not automatically. Oh, I'll try it again. Give me a minute here, and I'll set it up again. So to go out in a blaze of glory, gl- glory. I, I got it. I can track it. Okay. Going out in a blaze of glory here in Alaska, we're going to have one truck that we're going to use that we have not used pretty much the entire time in the game. This is a truck that is native to Alaska. In other words, you find it here. It's actually an English truck. But it is the Royal Bowel Movement, also called the Royal BM. And here it is. We're going to take this truck and we're going to do the logs with this. JVS is bored already. Let's just take a look. We're going to do off-road gearbox. This one, I think you've made the worst truck decision you can make. You found the worst one. <laughs> but there's so many bad trucks out you, there. You drove that truck on in this in Alaska already once. This truck? I regretted it. No, I've never. I've not driven this truck ever. That's no. I haven't had this truck in forever. It's actually a good truck. You don't like it? I never use it. What's the matter with it? If I'm not going to have all-wheel drive, there's better trucks that don't have all-wheel drive. Uh, it. I don't remember what the Royal BM is, but it is. It is an English truck. It's like for real. It's the. It, I know it, that wouldn't that be a lorry? A lorry, yes. It, but it's not called the Royal BM. It's there is some other name. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what the name is. Um, but it is a real truck in England. So. That's what I want. So we'll get rid of this front bumper. Then I just I wanted the. This is a tough truck. I just bounced off telephone pole. No damage. <laughs> Cami, are you are you doubting my choice? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the whole chat is doubting the choice. Is that, what is, what is this rebellion? To say it. What is the this what is the story? There we go. Oh yes, we're gonna get the. No, that's horrible. I hate that paint. Oh. Okay, what colors do we actually have? Is yeah, some British Leyland truck, right? <laughs> also known for making their road calls that were rail calls. All right. Let us get Scammel, thank you, S24. And let's get our rear log trailer. There she is. And we're going to go to the log station behind us. To the right, to the right, and then to the left. <laughs> Have a little faith, my friend. Look at this interior. Gorgeous very just utilitarian interior I th if I'm correct it's the only UK truck the Royal Pita <laughs> do you think there was some tongue-in-cheek going on when they called it the Royal BM or was that just coincidental I know I love it I, I, I actually like this truck. It's not it's not great. It isn't. But it's not... I don't think it's as bad. I guess we'll find out how bad it is. It, it's good for this kind of map. I should have put chains on. That was stupid. That's gonna We're going to pay for that. And that's not a trailer you There's, can drop and go into the garage. And... I know. All right. Well, I'll just have to deal with it. Hopefully we just won't have any steep hills. You got a steep hill just to get off the map. <laughs> I'm already stuck. <laughs> you guys are so mean. I can't believe you don't like my truck. It's a good little truck. It's ugly as a truck can get, but...
Look at how well this is doing in the mud. He sold it. Yeah, me too. Well, I mean, I pretty much did too. That's why I had to buy it. <laughs> I too sold it. It does all right in the mud. But yeah, because it doesn't have diff lock, it's not a good mud truck. And of course, the lumber mill happens to be, or the saw, the wood kiosk happens to be in the mud. We're slowly making it. There we go. Oh, Mark is calling me. Hold for one minute, please, folks. I'll be right back. We are back. Sorry about that, guys. As soon as I leave, people start coming in. I went from like 20 viewers to 23 while I was gone. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around. All right, let's get this last last load for Alaska. Did you, Did you pause the recording? I have unpaused it, yes. Thank you for checking because I do well, have a habit of... <laughs> I'm not always terrible. You're on the ball tonight. I know. Okay, so are we... Let's see. Where is this? Well, I, let me get out of this cul-de-sac here, but... Uh... Hey, you got to get back to a paved road, drive all the way north, go through the next map. Okay. It's going to be, well, he, he cameo put the name of it. If you look up through the chat, it's something different. It does not have a BM or BL in it. It's going to be like a, what did you call, what did you say it was again, cameo, if you're still here? Scanda something. Scanda? Oh, maybe it's Scandinavian then, if it's a name like that. Scammel S24. There you go. That's what it is, Red Alpha. Or similar to. And I believe I have looked it up in the past and verified that that is what it is. Oh, it's from Game Lore. Okay, so maybe that's not really what it... All right, there we go. Okay, we're underway for a second here. I need to see where we're going, though. So that means I'm going to sink again. Left and then right. Okay. <laughs> it wants to tip. Come on, baby, let the good times roll. Ah, okay, there you go. And that's exactly how it looks. Well, there you go. So now we know it is, as Cameo said, the Scammel S24. And is it made in England? Was that correct, the UK? Do not tip. It seems like it would be, but it's hard to say. Yep, Scammel Lorries Limited was a British manufacturer of trucks, particularly specialist in military and off-road highway vehicles. Or off-highway vehicles, 1921-1988. And it was at some point, <laughs> wasn't everything in England part of Leyland Motors? Even their, like, trams and, like, buses. And, and now I think... If I'm not mistaken, Leyland makes all of their, or a good portion of their powered motor cars for the railway. I'm pretty sure that's what I read, is that they, they, I watched a special on the British motor car, and it was, and still is produced by Leyland. And I know, I think they still exist. I'm pretty sure Leyland still exists. But as a train maker, they don't they don't make cars and like road vehicles anymore. 
that division is gone. Leyland, yes, motor works now, correct. <laughs> Whoa! This is a pretty map. I really do like these. this Alaska map. This has been a fun visit, a quick visit to the region. We're going to have to pound these episodes out on YouTube. I need to get to the next series. There you go. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, there's some cool. I'll tell you what, the uh, that oldies, uh, those trucks are really cool. What trucks are included in the oldies pack? On ATS, that is. And is it free? Or do you have to pay for it? <laughs> I'll get it if it's free. Is that an official DLC? I don't know. Uh, no. Okay, I've done the P350. We've got the MACR. Okay, the K100, the FLB, and it's in the workshop. Okay, so they just put those. They're just putting those mods together. Man, I think if you go back and watch my very first series, I had a P350. That's the that's the truck that did the. Um, it's like a 1950s truck, isn't it? It links to the mods. There you go. Okay, yeah, the Mac R. I've got the Mac R. It's a great truck. It's really good. The FLB is the only one I'm not so excited about. It, it it's a little bit low detail. I don't know. The interior is cool though. I like the metal dashboard that it has and that it matches the color of the outside. Forty nine and the fifty two three fifty, okay. The Mac R is, I think, out of all the ones that I've driven, it's probably my favorite vintage truck. It's just it is a brutal if when you're done driving it, it feels like you've been brutalized. It really does. Um like when I'm done driving that truck, I've like I feel like I've been on the road for a long time. I think it's the droning engine sound that's like, you know, brrrr. Like, it, it wears you out, which is funny because it's like that's it's those things you don't realize. I learned um, I had a car that I was driving for a while that kept pulling to the left and right, and I would get so tired driving it all the time. And eventually I got a newer car, um, which was my last car, the, um, the Hyundai uh, Sonata. And that car was super nice and really comfortable. And you'd think with, like, heated seats and, like, cruise control and it would lull you to sleep but actually I found that because I was comfortable I was actually able to travel a lot further without getting fatigued um, I would still get tired but it, it was a much longer drive before I started getting tired so when you have a, a vehicle that's rough on you like it can really affect the way that you perform as a driver oh my god we're gonna die <laughs> come on baby come on <laughs> This is thankfully this isn't too icy. It's mostly snow. Oh God! <laughs> Come on! Oh, we made it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I still even you guys don't watch when I'm off camera. Most of the time, when I drive in an American truck, when I'm not streaming, because I'm not trying to keep up with Captain Fast up ahead of me, I usually go about fifty-five. Honestly, even in the more modern trucks, I do, I do 60 maybe. The game feels more natural at those speeds. When you're going 75 miles an hour and you get to one of those corners, it just doesn't feel like you're really... In real life, you definitely wouldn't be driving around the corner that much. And it's because the roads are squished down. They, they tend to feel a lot more um, squished like that. And so you, you have like sharper curves and stuff. Oh, God. Here we go again. <laughs> That's the one that's going to get you. That taste rising up in the back of your throat. That's regret. That's good. <laughs> I made it. No, I'm good. We're good. This truck's doing good. A little slow through the mud, but not bad at all. That's because we don't have diff, too. The slowness is the lack of diff differential. Actually, I'm thinking the all-wheel drive actually might have helped it on the ice because different... Wheels keep trying to grip. 
instead of it being locked. Okay, we need to go straight over to Northport. Okay, past that, your no your economy nose dives. Okay, interesting. Yeah, like when I'm on the freeway, I get closer. I usually drive five. What I here's what I've been doing. I've been driving five below whatever the posted speed limit is. So if it's 65, I go 60. The other thing that I notice with that game, if you go a little bit slower, it also tends to reduce the problems that you have with traffic. The faster you go, the more often you get snared in weird traffic scenarios. <laughs> Because the traffic drives slow. So if you go slower, you kind of blend in a little bit better with the traffic and you don't have as many problems. When you're going faster, it's weird to be passing Mustangs in a semi-truck, you know. But for whatever reason, the game does weird stuff, so. Oh, dang. <laughs> so now, just to let you guys know, I will not be streaming or recording tomorrow. I won't be doing anything. Um, there he goes, Wajo. Right. <laughs> um, I have I we have the realtor coming on Wednesday, and so the house. I still have a million things I need to get done in the house before they get here, and I feel like I just need to spend all day tomorrow. I'm not going to be doing. I might stop to play a game here and there, but I'm not going to be recording or streaming or anything. I need to get this house done. So we're going to be up working late. We've arrived at Northport. Um, you know, you're going to Pedro Bay, right? Well, why is it sending me the wrong way? Okay, we've arrived at Mountain River. <laughs> what the frick? Why did it do well, that? You you crossed the bridge and turned left instead of right. Oh, so I need to turn right here. Okay. Wait, so it's going on? No, it's not. You okay. Go left at that one. Okay. So I didn't go too far out of the way. Did I? No. Okay. Just that one t little left turn there. I wonder why it tried. Why it tried to take me to Mountain River? That's so weird. I must have just read that wrong. Well, that was dumb. That's a good point too, Red Alpha. Because the other guys slow down to match them real slow. <laughs> this is real ice here. That bridge is actually... Uh, in Astoria is uh, four and a half miles long. It goes across the entire Columbia Bay. It's it is a okay cameo. If you watch my uh, American Truck Sim in real life videos, I think it's in my first playlist. It's a long playlist, but you'll see a couple. There is a video of me actually driving over that bridge in real life. Unfortunately, the weather was really crappy. But uh, I drove through Astoria, and you can see the whole town, and you can see the, the bridge and the, the whole area coming down off of there. So, um, yeah, that's, I did that purposely for American Truck because that was in there. I know I should have done it. Jay, I don't know why. I just didn't think about it, and I grabbed these. Okay, there you go. So you've seen it. <laughs> Not yet, Zwajo, because if I'm, I don't know what's going on with the move, how much downtime I'm going to have, um, or anything like that. I don't want to get into some new games and have them send me stuff and then 
like not be able to cover them. So uh, when I get settled and if everything works out well, I will. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to be behind the curve. Um, and it is what it is. I'd, I'd love to be first up on those, but it, it's what happens happens. I've got to be. That's that's very true, Cameo. I've got to be. Uh, I got to do the move first. So. So here we are back in Pedro Bay. Ugh. This is the only map in this series I don't like. And of course, it has to go all the way over there. Ugh. This is going to be a nightmare. I don't think we're going to be moving in the next two weeks. My goal is to have the house ready to go on the market in two weeks. Um, if we can get it done quickly before the spring hits. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, then we will be um, probably selling the house within 24 to 48 hours. Most of the houses around here are going in a day, and people are there's bidding wars and stuff going on. So we might get what we need for the house. We'll see. <laughs> mm, Kentucky, most likely, it seems to be the most affordable spot right now. So that's where we're going to go. Um. Not necessarily my favorite pick, but I think it's going to be nice, honestly. It's close enough to the kids that we can get back in a couple hours if need be. Ah, god dang it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's entertainment. <laughs> I cannot. I'm hardly even able to move. Uh, yes, Northern Kentucky, yep. So... Yeah, near the Ohio River. One of the places we're looking is four hours away. So um, that's that's what we're aiming for is four or less if we can. Um, so that way we can be by the kids. I can get back if I need to. And I'll be coming back anyway to visit. So Horseland, yes. Yep. That's part of the idea. But most, mostly because we really, as we've looked, that's where the property is cheap right now in our area. So there's places out west that are cheap, but there's no water. So I figure I'd rather have water. There you go. What part what part of the country are you in Cameo? You don't have to give me like just general is fine. Don't <laughs> South. Oh, Tennessee, okay. Yeah, that's real close. About four and a half hours closer than it is now, right? <laughs> Tennessee is about six hours, I think, from us. Is it? Yeah. Doesn't Tennessee have no... There's some tax advantage to Tennessee. It's expensive, though. We looked at Tennessee. Because we looked at Tennessee, too. Oh, you guys are Tennesseans. That's cool. Tennessee has no state tax. Oh. No state income. Not that I really ever get income taxed. I mean, I do a bit, but it's not a lot. It's like... 500 bucks a year or something. I, I can't pay it, but. Zuajo, how far east? I spent about a year in Millington. Wington! Oh, I don't remember any of the towns out there. I was there when I was in the Navy. It's just north of Memphis. Yeah, I could see living in Tennessee also. I'm not opposed to that. If we can find land. But I, once again, t t Kentucky is the aiming shot. I mean, even northern Ohio or southern Ohio would be good. But once again, the prices in southern Ohio are double or triple that of what they are in Kentucky. I mean, uh, nobody wants to live in Kentucky <laughs> for whatever reason. I'll take it. And the land is priced reasonably, too. The land is, you know, you can get, if I was just looking at land, I can get 70 acres for, for 40000 bucks. I mean, it's like 50000 maybe, but it's it's cheap. A lot of forested lands, too, though. I don't, we want to have. Is it usable land? 
buildable. That's what you got to look for. Now, some of the properties that are a little bit more expensive that we're looking at are. Some of them have houses on them and stuff already. But, like, the one we looked at, the house is there, but it looks like it's really rough. So we would probably still opt to buy a trailer um, and then live in the trailer, like the or motorhome, while we rehab the house. Oh, there you go. Oh, they got to make up for the lack of fuel tax they're getting. Right. <laughs> Wait, they tax you for having a hybrid? Yeah. Because you're not getting as much tax gas. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. Oh, man. You did not see this happen. No, don't see anything. <laughs> don't see the fact you went on the side of the road that didn't have the telephone post to winch to either let's not talk about that part either yeah I'm, I'm realizing that as I'm whoa god almighty I don't think it works like that, 44, but it would be nice. I mean, does anyone know how that works? I, well, I've that's, never. That's definitely a possibility. I've never heard of a logging company paying somebody to cut logs. I thought you'd have to pay them to come clear the land. Well, if you're hiring a tree service to take trees down on your land, yeah. But if, if you have viable timber that they have a commercial use for, Oh. It's not a bad idea then, huh? You make money off of your land. It depends on the trees probably, though, and everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, look, it's it's got to be a viable product for them to... Right. Worth, ...worth doing. Oh, you select cut your farm every 10 years? Oh, interesting. Huh. I wonder how you tell if your land is timber potential. That's an interesting question. Yeah, bad trees are worthless. <laughs> I suppose you'd have to have, you'd have to talk to the realtor about it and find out what, you know, it'll uh, say it in the listing. Okay. I wouldn't trust a, a realtor for that. But. Yeah. I've never heard of that before, but I guess it makes I guess it makes sense. The other thing is if you eat with wood and you got a good supply of potential heat. They leave a mess of the property, I bet. Sure, cuz you'll have a bunch of stumps, you know what I mean? So you'd have to clear up, you have to get a tractor and clear all that. But it would be cleared. <laughs> Get a tractor with a stump grinder. I guess my only fear is I'd want some of the trees cut, not all of them. Oh, no skitter. He's got a family that does it with mules. What? Oh, really? Now, here's a question, though. If you're sitting on valuable stuff... They just take it out from under you, right? They don't make you move off your land. Well, we might be doing some real tractoring. <laughs> we'll have to see. Yeah, I know in Ohio, I think mineral rights go with the property, but I'm not sure about other places. I'm not real concerned about that unless they make you move. But. Interesting. All right, well, we have got those things to look into, guys. Thank you. Far, far away. 
We are done. Javius, thank you so much for all the help. That was... That <laughs> made it, and it didn't do too bad. You got to admit, it was not, not great. It was slow. But it wasn't bad. And honestly, how much fuel? We only used a quarter tank of fuel. That I didn't. I stopped to get gas along the way, but... I was um, going to say, I saw you stop and fill up. But through the whole trip, we, we, we did okay on fuel economy. It was, wasn't too... Yeah, I didn't dump over, at least. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, that is the celebration point right here for the YouTube viewers and for you guys. We're done with Alaska. So now I'm going to have to figure out where we're going to go next. But it is great to be finished, finally, um, and to be able to move on to the next map. So I'm excited, guys. That's good news. I wish Micah could have been here. I'm sad that he missed it. Um, but he's still playing Helldivers, that goofball. He's going to get a phone call from me when we're done. <laughs> Anyway, love you guys. Have a good night, and we will see you next time. Uh, I'll see you maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday. We'll have to see. But like I said, tomorrow's going to be crunch day, so we got just a lot of stuff we got to get done, and I'm feeling some serious stress. So have fun. Bye.